Hi, and welcome to the session on professional services, what you need to know, an overview of trends, insights and available frameworks. I'm Jane Thorne and I'm the Head of Category Management Services at SUPC. My details are below. Roy. My name is Roy Dennis, I'm the Senior Category Manager from LUPC. Let's take a look at occupational health. Trends in occupational health, um, there's been a massive shift to remote services. Existing clients are demanding more occupational health to be provided online and over the phone. Indications suggest that this may be long term. Some clients indicating a return to office rate of 30 to 40 percent, and the industry needs to adapt to this and tailor services to each member's needs. The requirement for effective video services has seen a notable increase in IT costs for companies who provide those solutions to the market. Mental health? Well, it's not all mental health. Whilst media reports have indicated an increase in mental health issues attributed to COVID and its impacts on home and work life, musculoskeletal issues are experiencing an increase as people work from home where their workstations have not been set up or are working from dining room tables. COVID impacts. We have two NHS providers, <coughs> excuse me, on the, on, on the framework, Barts and Airedale. Both of them during the pandemic have needed to divert capacity to supporting activities triggered by the pandemic, minimizing their ability to take on new clients. In debt recovery, generally the industry has seen a trend towards the outsourcing of debt recovery with advanced debt recovery software enabling suppliers to lower the cost of recovery and increased recovery rates. The pandemic has had many impacts with more insolvency during lockdown, a decrease in activity due to customers working from home, which is slowing down the decision-making process. The bounce back loans that the government have provided to support businesses during the pandemic have be become payable after 12 months after an interest-free period, which is going to increase the risk of insolvency. And commercial debt and household debt is forecast to increase over the next few years. The breathing space regulations, known formally as the Debt Respite Scheme, come into effect in England and Wales on the 4th of May 2021. The suppliers to the framework already understand this regulation and comply to this. There are two categories, the standard breathing space and mental health breathing space. This, this regulation is for individuals and um, very small businesses and they need to meet an assessment criteria. The debtor will have to apply for the breathing space <clears throat> and the creditor, whether it's one of the suppliers or whether it's your finance team, cannot ignore. There's a link at the back of this pack to show you more details. Within temporary and permanent recruitment, we've seen quite a few changes. The pandemic resulted in a lot of staff being furloughed. And while initially there were a few struggles around that, we got over those hurdles quite quickly. We did see an increase in ancillary staff as campuses started to reopen, additional cleaning staff were needed to cope with the extra cleaning, owner, the extra cleaning required by the pandemic. There were considerably fewer many competitions on lots five and six, which is professional services staff and ICT staff. Thankfully, we haven't seen any price increases, but there is a pressure on the overall cost of temporary and permanent recruitment. But where your temporary staff are involved, there are concerns around living wage and the movement from living wage to minimum wage, and this is not the way to go about doing it. So I'd recommend if you are struggling with costs, fully review your spend. Use the framework wherever possible. It does offer the best rates and considerably better rates than those in the market. Check your framework suppliers are using the framework rates. And make, sure, make sure the suppliers are using the rates and they're using the correct rates. The Living Wage Foundation have shown that there's greater loyalty and greater morale of staff on living wage. If you reduce from living wage to minimum wage, you're effectively exploiting those in poverty. In legal services, the pandemic um, has influenced the suppliers, um, but they were resilient and easily adopted to working from home. In some areas, there have seen reduced volumes due to the disruptions in the courts and tribunals and the legal system. Brexit over the next three to five years um, uh, will see some increase in legal services as UK businesses and government are likely to demand more services from legal specialists seeking to remain compliant 
with the rules uh, in the regulatory landscape of the post-EU environment. In terms of technology gains, automation is expected within the industry. Mobile applications will be introduced, artificial intelligence or AI. We'll see the automation of routing practices, increased speed and reduced error and due diligence and contracts analysis tools. Blockchain also impacts, it impacts the legal services. Lawyers can leverage blockchain technology to streamline and simplify their transactional work, digitally sign and immutably store legal agreements using scripted text, smart contracts, and automated contract management reduces excessive time spent preparing, personalizing, and maintaining standard law documents. The reference to smart contracts, uh, the advantage of smart contracts included the potential for the for greater transparency of contractual terms, efficiency in automating performance and scope for using novel dispute resolution mechanisms such as pre-authorizing the transfer of funds or limit the need for post-litigation enforcement. So what's the overall impact of COVID and how have we and how have we switch to online learning and things like that. So we've got what we class tolerant categories where the switch to remote learning was relatively easy. Zoom calls and switching to online was less of an issue. Things like debt and legal services, there was no real issue moving there. What we've called adaptive categories where there was some impact and this affected categories like occupational health. Uh, they were a little bit more difficult to go online. And then there were challenging categories and these saw a dramatic impact as a result of COVID. These are things like travel and global mobility services. These have provided really challenging backgrounds and really challenging supply markets. Tenders in progress. By the time that you watch this presentation, two new frameworks should have progressed. Legal services, one that I'm personally involved with, the current framework will be replaced with a four lot structure building on its predecessor successes. This will include a lot for commercial services, dispute, human resources and a one-stop shop which will include the support for non-HG members. Global Workforce Mobility Services replaces the Global Mobility Services Framework and includes four lots, one for immigration services, overseas tax, accountancy and payroll services, employee relocation support services and a multi-purpose lot called Global Workforce Management Services. New framework agreements and investigation, we're looking at a marketing and media buying framework. Um, at the moment, we're reviewing the national spend. Um, so we're going to try to determine exactly what is in scope and what's out of scope. Uh, we had planned to look at the start of the pandemic, but the meeting didn't go ahead um, and it subsequently got sidelined. So we're hoping to pick that up, and bring a tender working party together as soon as we can on that. So watch this space for a media buying framework and tender working party. For those of you looking for more information, we've included some useful links here for the debt respite scheme information, which is to the government website to provide you further details and framework information for the five frameworks that we've mentioned today. Thanks for watching. We hope you've enjoyed it today. Um, there is a Q&A function on the right hand side of your screen. So if you've got any questions, we'll be around from 1230 onwards. So if you've got any questions about anything you've seen or heard today or you want more information, use the Q&A function and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching.